Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, today we're going to react to the true story of Adam prophet series by the merciful servant coming from an orthodox christian perspective adam always got deceived by eve eve fell for the trick of satan and ultimately started talking to adam adam then in turn starts listening to the woman rather than listening to god like that they experienced the fall they got shunned out of eden and now they have to wander across the earth this was always the description of the genesis story and moreover this was the description of our our fallen state. Within orthodoxy we believe that we are in a fallen state. Even such things as meat eating. Looking around we have to scavenge and eat meat just like animals. We already described this as a fallen state. In the original Garden Eden there was no death. And because there was no death there was no meat either. We were vegetarians of sorts. We were living off the fruits in that paradise. However because we transgressed against God we have been shunned out of the garden garden and now we are in the fallen state. This is the Christian perspective. I'm very curious to find out what the Islamic perspective is. With no further ado, let's have a look. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَخْرُجْ مِنْهَا فَإِنَّكَ رَجِيمٌ He said to Iblis, you are now an outcast. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now turns to Adam alayhi salam and he says to him to live in a place which he called Jannah. Adam alayhi salam was in paradise alone at first. And it says that istawhash, meaning he felt lonely. And he didn't know what this loneliness was from. So one day, Adam alayhi salam found it says that he was napping. He found before him his wife Hawa, a woman. And his loneliness immediately faded, it went away. And he asked her, Man anti, who are you? She said, Allah created me so that you can find your peace and tranquility with me. He said to Adam okay. So she's not created all of a rip like in Christianity, is she? about Jannah. He said, وَكُلَا مِنْهَا حَيْثُ شِئْتُمَا Eat from this paradise anything you desire. Anything at all you desire, take it from Jannah. But there was one condition as we all know. Allah had said, stay inside Jannah. You've got all of these things to enjoy. But this one tree, you don't eat from this one tree, the forbidden tree in Jannah. Okay, that's the same story. Shaitan came and he tricked them. He tricked them by saying, Wallahi. And he said, Wallahi, by Allah, I swear this is true. He started to glamorize what beautiful things could happen to them if they ate from that tree. Allah did not say don't eat from it. He didn't say don't touch it. He didn't say don't sit un under it. He said, Wala taqraba, don't even come near it. Okay. You will both become among the ones who have oppressed. You will do injustice to yourselves. And so Iblis made Adam salam, and Hawa think of the tree. Think of the tree. Think of the tree. So he said, that is how the devil works. He always takes your attention away from what is good onto what is evil. And he makes the sin appear attractive to you. Eve, Allah hasn't told you to stop eating from this tree, except there's a secret behind this tree. You eat from this tree, you will become like the angels. You are mortals. You will die one day. If you want to have an everlasting life, then you eat from this tree. He said, you will be everlasting or you will become like the angels. Your mortal bodies will change to angel bodies. And to sum it all up, to put the icing on the cake, he said, Wallahi! He said, think about it. 
God did not forbid you from that tree except that it's going to turn you into angels. Then he told them, God did not forbid you from the tree except that you will live eternally. He started making up all these right. different possibilities. It's the exact same story. Adam alayhi salam being a prophet, Adam alayhi salam never heard anyone lie ever in his life, mm. ever, ever heard anyone lie and he fell for it. And so did Hawa alayhi salam. She fell for it. And they ate from the tree and when they ate, their clothes disappeared and it was very embarrassing for them. What happened at that moment when they ate from the tree? There was actually a The clothes disappeared. In Christianity, they are already naked prior to it. And once they eat from the tree, they get the realization that they are naked and then they feel ashamed. Before that, they didn't have that self-reflection of being ashamed that they are naked. Concealing, there was a part of their body, which was the aura. It was concealed with light, with nur. Okay. They weren't naked running around. When they took from the tree, that nur went away. And so they were naked. Suddenly, the shame came to them. From what? From less covering, less concealment. This is because every sin, my dear brothers and sisters, leads to immorality. True. Sure. It leads us to desensitization. Straight yes. away, they this actually reminds me of AP. He had a discussion with a Muslim. I don't remember who it was clearly, but he talked about how sensitive he is to naked women because prior he's been brainwashed by Islam and by women that have been covered. And now that he lives in the States, he sees so many uncovered women and that triggers him. So he took that as something negative of Islam, that he cannot look at half-naked ladies without feeling something. The way they took They took the, the large leaves of paradise and they started to cover themselves. And Allah said what? Did I not tell you, O Adam? Did I not tell you, O Eve? That I warned you from eating from this tree. Why? That the shaitan, the devil, he is your open enemy. He did not tell you this. They fell into embarrassment. What could they say? They said, Rabbana ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا وَإِن لَمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا لَنَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ Oh our Lord, we have wronged ourselves. And if you don't have mercy on us, if you don't forgive us, then we will be of the losers. They realized their mistake, but it was too late. And now they have to bear what will happen to them. So they got sent down to the earth. So our father and okay, mother... So there is Adam the exact same description of the fall ultimately. They had to wander on earth after they've been kicked out of Eden. Hawa were finally expelled from the Garden of Eden. Right, as same. Allah explains in the Quran. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he warned us. He warned us from the shaitan. And he said, beware of him. He is your enemy. Look at what he did to your father and mother. He took them out of Jannah when they were once in there. Do not let him take you out of it. In other words, don't let him stop you from entering it. Adam and Hawa that were sent down to earth. Allah says, Allah said to them, descend from it. And they were sent down to this earth and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to them, I shall be with you, I will guide you, if you need me I'll be there. In one narration, it says that Adam alayhi salam landed in India. Okay. Adam alayhi salam, he came down to earth and landed in India. And Hawa in Asham or near Mecca in that area. Allah knows best, there's differences of opinions, but what we do understand is that they came down in separate places. And so they began the search for one another. This search, my dear brothers and sisters, is inherited today when people are searching for their spouses. Adam alayhi salam and Hawa searched for each other. They became acquainted, they found each other, 
on the mountain of Arafat. This is of course extremely epic, but at the same time it makes you reflect upon it. It is truly this search for the opposite sex. We are searching for that union. Moreover, I would believe that if it is truly inherited that Adam and Eve searched for each other, and this is why we seek the opposite sex, how about the fall out of paradise? This would be surely inherited as well, and this is why we seek to return to paradise. And there, my dear brothers and sisters, they renewed their life here on earth. There's a difference of opinion about how long Adam and Hawa stayed in paradise. We don't know exactly. But the majority of scholars agree that it was more than 40 years, at least. And he lived on earth for more about... More than 40 years. In the Bible it seems very, very short. ...about a thousand years. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Adam alayhi salam and Hawa children. The first boys. child to be born for Adam alayhi salam was a boy by the name of Qabil. Cain. He was born first and straight after him in the same stomach was a sister. So they were twins. Okay, that's new. Qabil's twin sister was beautiful. Whereas Qabil was not very handsome. After him came Habil. Abel. And he also had a twin sister, but Habil was a little bit more handsome and his twin sister wasn't as attractive. Opposites. It was only in those times Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed brothers and sisters to marry from each other, but not their twin. Okay. It's narrated in many hadiths that Hawa carried many stomachs more than a hundred stomachs, 200 stomachs, and each one of them was a twin. So she always carried twins, a boy and a girl, every time. So Qabil and Habil were the first two, and they had twin sisters. You weren't allowed to marry your twin sister. So they'd marry from the twin sisters of others. Adam alayhi salam decreed that Habil would marry the sister of Qabil, and Qabil would marry the, the twin sister of Habil. Qabil had a sickness in his nafs. That was his test. His test was jealousy. Being the older brother, being the one who wanted the, the nicer sister, he wanted his own twin sister. In Christianity, it is different. Cain and Abel, the two brothers, have to offer a sacrifice to God. One offers crops, wheat, the other offers meat. And God is pleased with the meat, but he doesn't like the crops. This is what makes the brother jealous of the other brother, because he didn't receive the love of God. Little side note here, I always found it funny that God loves meat, but doesn't like crops. Take that, vegans. Because she was prettier. Habil didn't mind, but this was the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He can't marry his own twin sister, this is haram. Okay. So Qabil got very jealous. Habil tried to advise him, and Habil was stronger actually. It was said that he is stronger physically. He tried to advise him, my brother, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for this is his decree. Now Adam alayhi salam knew about this, so he brought them together and he said to them, okay, so Tim, why don't you both go and offer an offering to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and see which one will be accepted. Habil, he was yeah, a shepherd. there it is. He had sheep and Qabil was a farmer. He grew wheat and crops. Habil went and got his finest, fattest, best sheep and he gave it as an offering. Qabil went and got his, his worst <laughs> bits of wheat that he had. Yeah, that is different as well in the Bible. As I said, they both offer what they have. One offers meat, the other one offers wheat. It's not that anybody offered a better version of the meat or the wheat or worse one. However, it is God that decides that he prefers meat over wheat. So Allah accepted That's the, biblical the story. and rejected the ugly one. Allah mentions this in the Quran and recites upon them the true story of the two sons of Adam. When they offered a sacrifice, and it was accepted from one of them and not accepted from the other. Yeah, that's it. The latter said, the other person whose offering was not accepted said, I will kill you to his brother. Okay, within the Bible, he doesn't say that he will kill him. He simply kills him. Allahu Akbar. Oh brother, if you stretch out your hand against me to kill me, I shall not stretch out my hand to kill you. 
fear Allah, the Lord of the worlds. Habil was actually stronger than Qabil and he could, and he could have killed his brother if he wanted to. But Habil's piety to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stopped him. It's his piety, it's something that he had developed inside of him that stopped him from this terrible act. That's a good addition. And then he says, Inni akhafu Allah Rabbil Alameen. He tells you the reason why he did not extend his arm out to kill his brother. Why? He said, I fear Allah, the right. Lord of all mankind. Allah says, His soul then prompted him to kill his brother. And he killed him and became one of the losers. Now, when he killed his brother, Allah tells us in the Quran that Qabil didn't know what to do with his body. Mm -hmm. So Allah sent a raven or a crow scratching into the earth to show him how to bury the corpse of his brother. Allah sent two crows because it says that That's he carried well. his brother around and started walking everywhere and didn't know what to do with the corpse of his brother. First death, they didn't know how to bury. Right. So Allah sent two crows and they fought each other in front of Qabil. One killed the other and then it went and made a hole in the ground and buried it with soil. After he buried his brother and it was over, Qabil felt regret. He regretted, but he did not repent. The regret came back to him. But guess what? He did not do anything about it. He did not repent. He did not make tawbah. He did not ask Allah for forgiveness. He didn't try to compensate his actions. The story then after that is very interesting. What happened? It's already very interesting and very different yet again from the Bible. Within the Bible, he simply buries his brother and tries to hide it from God. But of course, God sees what he has done and with that shuns him even further. He falls even further, not only like Adam that fell from paradise to earth, but now he falls even further and becomes a beggar. And now he has to live an existence as a beggar, begging for food, wandering the world. That is the Christian perspective. Qabil did not go back to his father. Okay. And the news came to Hawa first, to their mother. Some narrations say that Iblis himself came to Hawa. And he said to Hawa, Qabil killed Habib. And she said, killed? What does kill mean? In another narration, Qabil that didn't know sense. how to kill him. There was no so, death. Iblis came and showed him how to kill him. He was trying to strangle him and try to put, pull him, but he didn't know how to kill him. So I told him, grab a huge rock and throw it on his head. So he, they learned how to kill and Hawa didn't know what death was. So he said to her, she said, what do you mean? What's killing? What's, what's death? He said, Iblis told her, it means that he can no longer eat or talk or walk or drink. Then she started to cry. Adam السلام, approached Hawa and he asked her what's wrong in this narration and she wouldn't answer. She kept on crying. He asked her a second time. She wouldn't answer. She kept on crying and he asked her a third time. She kept on crying and she wouldn't answer. So Adam السلام, kept silent. Qabil ran to the mountains it is said. Now he had gone and thereafter what happened? Adam السلام, That's Mufti Mank, no? And his wife Hawa السلام, they had many children. And Adam alayhi salam used to constantly remind them and he used to tell them. He used to call them regularly and tell them that this is what you need to do and that is what you need to do and so on. And this is how shaitan, they used to gather together and he used to remind them how shaitan led him astray and how shaitan was very jealous and so on. So there is something for us to learn from this as well. We need to gather our children and we need to constantly remind them not only of our beginnings, but of the messenger of the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of something very interesting again, where Adam alayhi salatu was salam got sick. He got ill. He got ill at a certain stage. And look at Allah's plan. Allah made him wish for something. Wish for what? Certain fruits he had eaten in Jannah. He ate some fruits in paradise. He still remembered the taste. So he was wishing for it, making dua to Allah, saying, Ya Allah, I'm wishing for these fruits. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed him 
that I'm not a scholar by any means, but imagining how those fruits must have tasted because, as we said in the beginning, there was no death within paradise. And because there was no death, there was no meat. However, because we have meat nowadays, we are supposed to eat meat. Meat tastes good to us. Our body recognizes it as nutrition. It tastes great to us. However, within paradise, those fruits would be everything that we need for sustenance and therefore must even taste better than any steak you can imagine. A certain place you will find something. Not that you will find the fruits, but at a certain place you will find something. But he was unhealthy. He was not healthy enough to go there. So he decided to send some of his children. He says, go to that place and you will find something for me there. Mm. So when they went there, they found some angels, a group of angels. These angels told the children of Adam, we are angels and we want you to go back to your father. He is ill and his time is up. Okay. So they walked with Adam, with the children of Adam alayhi salam, back to Adam alayhi salam. And as they entered, as they entered, Hawa, may peace be upon her. She recognized this angel is the angel of death. The angel of death. So she quickly started going behind Adam alayhi salatu wasalam and he says, no, 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 don't worry, move away. I was created before you. He was not worried. Now why am I going and so on? He gathered his children on his deathbed and he reminded them saying, Allah will send messengers to you. He will not leave you alone. He will send messengers to you and messages. These messengers will come different languages, different names, different dialects, but their message will all be one calling you to worship one Allah, the one who made you and to stay away from the devil and to be careful that the biggest crime anyone can commit is to associate a partner with the creator. And well after done. he reminded his children, the angels took his soul away and he passed away. And he passed away happily. He was happy to go. Why was he happy to go? Very interesting. I think that's a lesson. When I was reading about it, really it brought tears to my eyes. He was happy to go because he knew he is going back to that heaven that he came from. He knew. He knew he's going back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he was happy to go because he had problems here on the earth. He had tests. He had difficulties. He first hunted for his wife. Then he had the problems with his children and so on. And now he had to taste death. But that death was getting him to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And from this, there is a narration. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us through the lips of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Tuhfatul the gift of a true believer is death. Why? You're going back to your maker, your creator. There's no more inflation. There's no more robberies. There's no more power cuts. There's no more, you know, credit and debt and people following you and running behind you and sickness and cough and what have you. Everything ends. It stops. There is only justice and goodness. And for you is what you wish and what you want and what you, whatever you desire. All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. Absolutely powerful. Throughout the video, as I said, there are not many major differences between the two stories. There are minor differences, certain additions within the Islamic narrative in comparison to the Christian story. However, what is truly powerful is the ending, of course. The ending here, the epic tale ends with Adam dying, and the only thing left to say is that you have to worship only one God and stay away from Satan. This quintessence of the story is so powerful because it reminds the people, yet again, of Islam, the worship of one God. This is the stark contrast to the Christian story. The Christian story is concerned with the fall predominantly. It describes how we fell from grace, how we fell away from God and why we are in this current state, why we have to eat meat, why we have to kill each other, etc., etc., you name it. All the evil that we see in this world. If you go even further, you will see some Christians claiming that Satan is the prince of this world. World, that he rules supreme here in this world and this is why we see so much sin and therefore the Islamic story differs tremendously because it has a happy end so to speak the happy ending is you will have to repent you will have to return to 
got. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to continue to support this channel, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for your ongoing support, guys. As always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.